kidding? Well, in light of what's going on um, between Russia and Ukraine, I would just pray that um, you would take some time to, to pray for peace in that situation and uh, that God would work out that situation. I don't uh, exactly know how it works out. Somebody asked me the other day, and I think I mentioned this the other day in a sermon, um, they said, well, you know, how do you think it's going to work out? It's like, I have no idea. I don't know, you know, how, what the future holds, but I know who holds the future, and that's God. So when we believe in God, we know that he holds the future, and we can have absolute peace and confidence knowing that, uh, that he's in control. Tonight I'm going to continue my series on big promises, and tonight... Um, the, the topic that I'm going to cover tonight is you can do more than you think you can. A lot of people have limiting thinking, um, and limiting thinking, uh, um, you know, kind of controls their lives. And um, so tonight I want to talk about uh, you can do more than you think you can. So let us begin with a word of prayer, and uh, I'll get into this evening's message. Well, gracious Father, we thank you. We thank you for the privilege that you give us uh, week after week to preach your word, to preach the whole counsel of God. Bless this word as it goes forth. Prepare our minds and hearts. Settle our minds and hearts so that each mind and each heart can receive the download from heaven that you would have for each of us. Bless us, Lord. Help us. Give us wisdom. Give us understanding. Mm -hmm. Show us your ways, Lord. Show us your word, Lord, and show us your will that we would thoroughly understand how we should live as Christians. Again, this word is another big promise of yours, Lord. So I pray that we lay hold of this promise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 After the message, we'll take an offering. So if I forget, somebody has to remind me. <laughs> but anyways, like I said, <clears throat> today's, tonight's message is you can do more than you think. And my text is just one verse, only one verse from Scripture. But what a verse it is, just one simple verse. You've probably heard this verse before, you've read this verse before, and most of you probably have memorized this verse. It's a life verse of mine. I've been using this verse for probably more than 40 years. And in the King James Version, it reads like this, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you might say, well, I can leave now because I already know that verse. Yeah. Well, hold on. <laughs> There's a lot more here than you probably realize. So don't run out the door. Lock the doors, please. Yeah. And, um, you know, uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll take this apart. And I want to show you a few things you may not have considered in terms of this verse. That was the King James Version that I gave you. I love the King James Version. But the NIV, the New International Version, is also a good translation. It says, I can do everything through him, speaking of Christ, who gives me strength. And the Living Bible is an interesting um, translation as well. It expands the text this way. I can do everything God asks me to with the help of Christ who gives me strength and power. And J.B. Phillips offers this colorful rendering. It's not a translation, but a paraphrase. And uh, Phillips's paraphrase says, I'm ready for anything through the strength of the one who lives within me. See, one of the things we forget sometimes as Christians is we have the strength and the presence of Christ living within us. So when we attempt to do something it's not a do-it-yourself project it's not, not a diy at all it's me plus god and god is the more important factor by the way and finally there's a unique translation the 20th century uh, new testament says this it says nothing is beyond my power and the strength of him who makes me strong those are all interesting translations for most of us, Philippians 4.13 is probably an old friend, a verse you've heard over and over again in church, if you've been in church for any period of time. 
You may have learned this verse way back in Sunday school if you were a Sunday school kid. And perhaps, maybe you have a plaque or a coffee cup or some kind of wall hanging that has this verse emblazoned on it. Every once in a while, you'll see this verse on a bumper sticker. But knowing a verse so well may mean one important thing. It no longer amazes us or challenges us. See, sometimes we think, well, I know that. But it doesn't have the pizzazz that it once had. I mean, when you're a new Christian and you find out that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, that's exciting. But when you've been a Christian for 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 years, eh, it's lost its, its zip. It's lost its um, appeal. And this is, I think, num message number eight in this series I've been preaching called Big Promises. God says you are. God says you can. God says you have. God says you will. And this may be the biggest promise of all because this particular promise is so broad and encompassing. The Bible says that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. I mean, most people probably would say, I can do some things, but probably not all things. I mean, you know, most of us, that's pretty much our mindset. I can do pretty much most things that I need to do, but all things, that's a little bit much. But the Bible says all things, not most things. And, you know, you might say, well, maybe it's just hyperbole or, you know, does God literally mean what this verse says? I mean, can this verse possibly be true? And I guess we have two problems with a verse like this. The Apostle Paul seems too confident, saying, I can. And the promise seems too broad, do all things. I mean, are you serious? All things. Do all things. We know what this verse says, but the issue really is, do we truly believe this verse, especially when hard times come, when circumstances are against us? Can we really do all things? And I'm going to uh, tonight give you four answers to this question. Can we do all things? Or are all things even possible? Along with each answer, I'm also going to give you an individual principle to think about that will help you understand this a little bit uh, more in depth. So answer number one is, can, can, I, can we, can I really truly do all things? Yes. And answer number one is, you can if you want to. Yes. You see, I call this the principle of personal desire. See, a lot of times people want to do a whole bunch of things, but they really don't have the drive to do a lot of things. They could possibly do a lot of things, but um, they just don't have the personal desire to make it happen. And before the deed, actually, the desire to do it has to be there first. See, before there's a deed to do, there has to be a desire to do something. That's why I call this the principle of personal desire. See, to accomplish your goal, you've got to decide what you want to do. If you haven't really clearly decided what you want to do, first of all, listen to my sermon from last Sunday, because I talked about that divided man with a divided mind from James chapter 1. But this is an important lesson for us to learn, and I'm not going to re-preach that, but it isn't a principle in life that usually gets the things you really go after. I mean, if, if you're just kind of wishy-washy, thinking things are just going to kind of happen or fall into place by themselves, <laughs> you're probably kidding yourself. But if you really want something with all your heart, again, listen to my message last week uh, from last Sunday about being wholehearted, wanting something wholeheartedly. It makes a difference. If you want something with your whole heart, and if you focus all your energies towards that one supreme goal, that's pretty much uh, a good indication that you'll have the ability to achieve that goal. If you just half-heartedly want something, you know, I really would like a Corvette, you probably will never get the Corvette. You know, sure it'd be nice, but I really don't want to work that hard to make the money to get it. You know, and 
Plus, why would I want a Corvette? The insurance is probably sky high. Oh, I'd really like one, but I really don't have that burning desire for it. I'm not really willing to really commit to getting it, so probably not going to happen. You know, as a pastor, I have to tell you, I have a lot of people that come to me with their issues and problems, but I'm probably not the best counselor for people because I tend to be a little bit um, straightforward with people, if you will. And it's really not my area of training. It's really not my area of gifting or my expertise. But like all pastors, I talk to many people about their personal problems on a regular basis. And although I'm really not a trained counselor, I've learned a lot about human nature just by casual con observation and casual conversation with different people. And through the years, I've learned this much. If you've got a problem in your life, you're going to get better faster if you stop saying can't and start saying won't. And you might say, well, what's that mean? What do you mean can't? See, a lot of people, you know, they, they, they say, well, I can't do that. I can't do this. You know, and once you start saying won't, you probably put things in the proper framework. You know, because you might say, well, I can't forgive, or I can't find time to read the Bible like the pastor does, or I can't be a witness for God. But when you say I won't instead of can't, it's the point, it's at that point where you kind of start telling the truth. It's not that you can't do it, you just won't do it. You know, I, 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 I really wish I had a prayer life, but I don't really want to spend time in prayer. I don't want to be bothered with that. I'd rather watch the news or read the paper or do whatever else I do or play on Facebook. So I don't commit time to prayer. So I'm not good at it. So I can't pray for, you know, a considerable amount of time every day. No, you could, but you just won't do it. You just decide you won't do it. And for most of us, can't is just a convenient excuse. What you're really saying is, I just won't do it. And it is possible for you to do all things. So you might ask yourself, is it possible? I mean, this verse seems so encompassing. Is it possible for me to do all things? The answer is yes, absolutely. But you must want to. See, a lot of people, they want things, but they don't have the want to to get there. And so you have to have the want to. Um, to accomplish things, you have to have the will and the want to. Because if you don't have the will and the want to, you're never even going to get started. You know, I want my house clean, but, you know, I would rather sit on the couch. You can't do that. <laughs> you know, I, 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 want, I want to find, you know, I want to find uh, the right person in my, for my life. Well, you know... Well, stop going to the places you're going to and come to church. You'll find some good, better people there. You know, but you have to have the want to. You know, so the number, the, the answer to number one is the, the principle of personal desire. You have, to have the, the, you have to have the personal desire to want something. The second answer is, can I do all things? Is, you know, you can if God wants you to. And this is the principle that I call the principle of divine direction. See, this verse is not a blank check. See, a lot of times people read this verse and say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I'm in. You know, where do I sign up? And I'm, things are just going to start falling in my lap. God doesn't write a blank check. See, the Apostle Paul emphasizes this when he says, I can do all things through Christ. He didn't say, you can do all things. He said, I can do all things through Christ. It's not as if Paul is saying, I can do anything if I dream it up. Because that's what most people think this verse means. You know, if I can dream it, if I can think it, I can do it. <coughs> but if you read the context, what the Apostle Paul is really saying about the, the varying and difficult circumstances of life what he's really saying is you can do all things. And in verse 11, the Apostle Paul says, I've learned to be content 
whatever the circumstance. So you have to look at the context in which he's writing this verse. I mean, just two verses up, he's saying, no matter what circumstance comes my way, I've learned to be content. And that's hard for people. But here's my paraphrase of verse 12. So he said, no matter what comes my way, I've learned to be content, whatever the circumstance. Then in verse 12, I'll give you the Curtis paraphrase. Sometimes I have a roof over my head, and sometimes I don't. I'm content. I've been laid up sick, and I've been in good health. I learned to be content. I've eaten like a king, and I've had nothing on my plate. I've learned to be content. I've had money in the bank, and I've had nothing and been flat broke. I've learned to be content. See, I've learned to be content no matter what my situation <clears throat> might be. That's hard for us to kind of wrap our minds around, especially in the Western world where there's a safety net that catches everybody. But with this in mind, we can paraphrase verse 13 this way. I have learned through the power of Jesus Christ that I can face whatever comes my way. See, it's important to understand the context. I've learned through the power that I have in Jesus Christ that I can face whatever comes my way. See, some of us, the winds blow contrary, and I can't do that. And, you know, we, we stiffen our backs and get chill bumps on our skin, and I, I don't know what I'm going to do. And then the second thing they do is they call their pastor after they post it on Facebook, you know, that they can't do this or that or whatever. But if it's good, I can enjoy it. If it's not so good, I can deal with it because I have access to the everlasting strength of Jesus Christ. See, that's the point. If it's not so good, I have access to the power and strength of my Lord. Let me put this teaching in one sentence. Through Jesus Christ, you can do everything God wants you to do. How interesting is that? See, you can face everything he wants you to face. You can fight every battle he wants you to fight. You can obey every command that he gives you. You can endure every trial that comes your way. And you can overcome every temptation through Jesus Christ. See, if God is in it, you can do it. See, a lot of times we try to do things that God's not in and wonder why it doesn't go. See, if God is in it, you can do it. And that brings it all together in a little different perspective. See, if God is in your difficulty, you can face it. <clears throat> if God is in your failure you can overcome it. If God is in your dreams, your dreams will come to pass. If God is in your goals, you'll achieve every one of your goals. If God is in your prayers, God will answer your prayers. See, can you really do all things? You can if God wants you to. That's an important point <clears throat> and an important principle. Um, the next answer is, can I really do all things, is you can if you rely on Jesus Christ. See, a lot of us, we don't really rely on Christ. And I call this the principle of divine enablement. You might say, well, what the heck does that mean? You know, we now come to the heart of this verse. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. The Greek word means to pour strength into See, that's what God does. It's like pouring water into a glass, or it's like pouring your morning coffee into a cup. It's the picture of an empty vessel being filled by another outside source. See, by yourself, your vessel's empty. But because we have Christ, God pours into us his strength, giving us the strength to do all things through Christ, who gives us, me, you, strength. So when we face the problems of life, actually Jesus Christ pours 
his strength into us. And this makes Philippians 4.13 totally different from a purely secular approach to life. You know, how far will positive thinking get you when you lose your job? I mean, how far will positive thinking get you when your husband or your wife leaves and says adios? Um, the, 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 the pastor, Pastor Rick, my, uh, one of my spiritual fathers that I've known for a long time, he, he did our wedding, and he said, well, he says, I told my wife one thing long, long ago, and they've been married for decades and decades. He says, I told her, if you're leaving, I'm going with you. So their marriage has lasted a long time just on that principle. And um, he shared that with us a couple times when he counseled us. Uh, in our uh, in our marriage, still works, yeah. so I think that works. But I mean, what do you do when your spouse leaves? I mean, you know, that's kind of crazy. I mean, what do you do when you got um, more more month than you have money and um, you don't know what to do? I mean, what do you do when your daughter decides to have an abortion? I mean, where's the hope for life? You know, you have to ask yourself. You know, I mean, if you just have positive thinking and positive thoughts, what will you cling on when life really presses in? You know, how will you find the strength to go on if it's just positive thinking and there's no God? Where's the anchor for your soul if God isn't present in your life? See, it takes a lot more than just positive thinking. You've got to have Jesus Christ on the inside. You have to walk with him and talk with him and be in him and with him and operate through him. See, are we to believe better than other people? You know, no. Are we are we stronger? No. You know, does God give us a free pass so that what happens to others doesn't happen to us? No, not really. Are we exempt from the coronavirus and then uh, all its later variations? No, no, we're not exempt from that. You know, we suffer heartache and we suffer disappointment just like anybody else in the world. We endure suffering. We endure sadness. We endure opposition. We weep because we live in a fallen world. All that anyone else suffers will suffer too. That's just life. But what makes the difference? There's only one thing. Jesus Christ within. See, that's the difference for a believer. We have the power of the indwelling Christ who gives us strength. A lot of times we don't really think that. You know, our, our, we, our knees buckle and we get wobbly. Boy, say that fast and get all those syllables mi mixed up real quick. You know, our, our knees wobble. <laughs> Yeah, well, we'll just leave that alone. I'm not going to try it a third time <laughs> and mess it up. But, um, you know, without the, without the power of the indwelling Christ, you know, uh, we'd be just like anybody else. And the Apostle Paul, he addresses this in another famous passage. As I was thinking about this particular message, I was thinking about Paul's statement in Romans 8.35. He says, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? See, so he says, there's nothing that can separate us from Christ. All these things happen to the children of God, but they can't separate us from Jesus Christ. See, we're bound to him by the cords of love that nothing on earth can sever difficulties, pain, problems, pressures, all those things probably happen. But we're bound to Christ by the cords of love that nothing that happens to us can sever that relationship we have as believers in Christ. So you might say, well, yeah, but I'm not sure. Is Jesus enough for the problems of life? Absolutely yes. Yes and yes and yes, a thousand times yes. And the saints across the ages have said the same thing. Christ is always enough. See, nothing in all creation can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
Nothing can separate us. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Paul never says that Jesus will get you out of trouble. See, a lot of people wish for that. You know, they think they're playing Monopoly and their Monopoly has the Jesus card. You know, if I get in trouble, I'll just get the get out of jail card and the Jesus will get me out of jail card. That's not reality. See, Jesus won't get you out of trouble because most of the time you got yourself in trouble. But Jesus did say he would never leave us. He'll always be with us. He'll be with us no matter what happens. Even if it's based on your own poor choices and your own absolute stupidity, he'll never leave you. See, you can do all things if you rely on Jesus Christ. Not in your own strength, not in your own wisdom, and not in your own ability to figure things out. Some people think, well, you know, I'm just smart. I can figure this out. You know, I've had... Multiple people tell me, well, if it's not science or just logic, you know, well, then it's not real. As if God's not real because, you know, it's not scientific or logical. But if you say, Lord Jesus, I'm relying on you, I can assure you that you can do all things through Christ. But you have to have that confidence that God is indwelt in you and... He's got your back no matter what. The fourth answer is, um, is this verse true? Is you can, you can start if you start today and don't look back. This is another issue for a lot of people. And I call this the, the principle of personal choice. Which way are you going in life? See, your answers make all the difference. Did you just catch what I just asked? Which way are you going in life? See, many people live in the past, but I said, which way are you going? Many people worry about the past. They fret over the past. You know what I say? Forget it. Forget the past. It's over. It's done. It's gone. It's finished. You see, the river of life never stops. Those things that happened in the past, They'll never happen again because the river is an endless stream that goes in one direction, forward. But you can sit on the bank and wonder, well, I'm worried about the past. I want to live in the past. I used to like the past. I want to fret over the past. You know, it's interesting because Paul also said this. Of all the things I know, this one thing I do, forgetting that which is behind. I press to the mark of the high calling of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. See, the interesting thing about the past is you can't go back even if you want to. Those people that dream about the good old days, stop it, you fuddy dud. You can't go back even if you want to go back. See, I preached the rules of spiritual progress a long time ago. I can't go back and I can't stay here. I must go forward. There's only one way. You only can go forward. Do you know there's no reverse gear in the spiritual life? Yeah. See, most of you, you've driven a car that has reverse and neutral. So you're comfortable with that. You know, you put your, you put your spiritual life in neutral and say, I just want to hang here for a while. I don't want to go forward. I don't want to go backward. I'm in neutral. Or... I want to go back, so I put it in R. The spiritual life has no reverse gear. It only goes in one direction, forward. See, the river of God's purpose flows only in one direction. That's forward. You have to know that. The river of God's purpose flows one way, forward. Let me put it all together. Can you really do all things through Christ? The answer is absolutely yes, you can. And here's the four principles. The first principle I gave you tonight was there's personal desire. The second principle I gave you tonight is there's divine direction. The third principle I gave you tonight is there's divine enablement. And the fourth principle I gave you tonight is there's personal choice. 
I don't know if you noticed the four things that I told you about tonight, but they're kind of a sandwich. The first one's personal, the other two are divine, and the last one's personable. It's a perfect balance here. Yeah, I like sandwiches. You know why? Because two depend on you, sandwiches. <laughs> two depend on you, and two depend on God. See, personal desire depends on you. But divine direction and divine enablement, the, the middle, that's God. And then the last, personal choice, that depends on you. Look at this verse again. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It begins with I and ends with me. And Jesus Christ is in the middle. The sandwich. I, God, God, two slices of God in the middle. And then my personal choice is on the bottom. So it begins with me and ends with me, and God is in the middle. So we could probably just boil this verse down to four words instead of wow. all the other words that this verse says. I can through Christ. Did you get that? I can through Christ. I can love. I can through Christ. You know, to make it clear, let me explain what I'm not trying to say. I'm not saying... I can do all things. <clears throat> See, if you just say I can do all things, those are the words of a boaster. Somebody that's got their chest puffed up. I can do all things. You know I can do all things. But I'm not saying I can do some things. Because if your mindset is I can only do some things, those are the words of a doubter. But what I'm saying is, I can do all things through Christ. Those are the words of a believer. You understand the difference? See, you can do everything God wants you to do. You can fulfill His will in your life. You can obey every command that He's given. You can endure every trial. and You can overcome every single temptation. You can do everything God wants you to do through Jesus Christ. Perhaps you should make this into a motto and stick it on your dashboard. Stick it on your bathroom mirror. I can through Christ. Four words. I can through Christ. You know, many of you probably remember the story called The Little Engine That Could. I brought this up a while back and it's so good I want to bring it up again. You know, you probably either read it to your children or or maybe it was read to you when you were a child. You know, I'm sure as a kid you probably heard it. Maybe you forgot all about it. But I never thought about it again as, a, as a, an adult since my kids, you know, are, are way older and, you know, whatever. But um, I heard a, a, a minister from Dallas Theological Seminary. He talked about how this little engine that could fits into this verse of Philippians 4.13 when he was preaching on this. And it kind of stuck with me. So I hope that this is encouraging to you because it teaches us that with the Lord's help that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And it was a great message. And the parts that I remember, he wrapped it up with the little engine who could. And this is kind of a big-time minister who, who takes this little simple children's tale and brings it down to make some biblical sense. I'm sure you probably remember how it goes. The little boys and girls in town on the other side of the big mountain, they're waiting for the train to bring them their toys. Mm -hmm. And the train was filled with teddy bears and dolls and stuffed animals, tops and jackknives and all kinds of things that the kids wanted. And there were baskets filled with food and candy and red-cheeked apples and big golden oranges, bottles of creamy milk for breakfast and fresh spinach for dinner and peppermint drops and lollipops and all kinds of stuff. But to get to the town, you had to go up, up, up the mountain and then down, down, down to the other side. 
And it wasn't an easy thing to do. Going up, up, up the mountain, not easy. And when the train with the toys came to the last stop before the mountain, the engine broke. Kaput. What to do? The engine won't go. The engineer went looking for another engine to carry the train with the toys over the mountain to the boys and girls on the other side. They all were waiting expectantly for the toys and all the things that the train was carrying. So they went to the roundhouse. And I don't know if you know what a roundhouse is. If you've ever been to Greenfield Village, you know what a roundhouse is. It's the house that contains all the different engines for locomotive engines for trains. And they have a roundhouse there that, uh, that holds lots of these old time uh, train engines. But he went to the roundhouse and he talked to the several different engines, but no one was interested in the toys. No one was interested in this task. But one big shiny engine, engine said he only carried passenger trains and the diesel locomotive said he didn't want to bother with a load of toys. And one by one, all the big engines said no to the load of toys. And then from the corner of the roundhouse came this little voice, I'll do it. And it was the little blue switch engine. I'll carry the train with the toys over the mountain to the boys and girls on the other side. But the engine said, you're too small. But he said, I'm willing to give it a try. So he hooked up the little engine to the train with all the toys and all the other things. And here's where the drama begins. Remember how the little engine began to gather steam for that climb up to that big mountain. Puff, puff, chug, chug. Puff, puff, chug, chug. Up the side of the mountain. And as it gathered speed, the little engine began to say to itself, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, each time a little faster than before. And up the mountain it went, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. At last, straining with every ounce of energy, the train cleared the crest of the mountain and started down the other side. Seeing the train in the distance, the children cheered and waved and danced with the light. Down the mountain came the train, chug, 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 chug. The little engine saying to itself, I thought I could, I thought I could, I thought I could. See, most of you right now are probably on the other side of the mountain. You may face financial difficulties or some kind of family emergencies or crisis. Perhaps your doctor's given you some bad news. Maybe your job's in trouble. Maybe your children are wandering far from God. You may be facing impossible tasks that you can't even tell anybody else about. The mountain in front of you seems so high that you're tempted to give up without even trying. But here's the lesson from Philippians 4.13. If you hook up with Jesus Christ, you can climb that mountain. See, when you come to the end of this year, you'll say, I thought I could. Right now, it's only, I think I can. But remember, through Jesus Christ, you can. But he has to be part of the equation. But the story of the little engine that could is charming. But the problem is, the story of the little engine that could is not entirely biblical. See, there's two important differences between the story and the text, Philippians 4.13, that we're talking about tonight. <coughs> First, the little engine said, I think I can. But the Apostle Paul was saying, I know I can. The second is, the little engine relied on its own power to get over the mountain. But we have available to us the resources of an infinite God. That's the difference between I think and I know. See, when we have the resources of an infinite God, I know I can. Can you really do all things through Christ? Yes. Only if you have Christ, yes. then you can. Here's a big promise for today. 
Jesus will give you everything you need to do everything he calls you to do. See, not necessarily everything. Some people ask for things that are outside of the context in which God would permit. But in this confidence, Jesus will give you everything you need to do everything he calls you to do. Let us go forward saying, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because if that's truly our mindset, that's truly what we'll accomplish. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Let us pray. Lord of all things, oh Father, I pray Lord that even now that you would deliver us from paralyzing fear. Fear is something that holds so many of us back. Help us to trust you more. Father, I just thank you for bringing us to hard places and difficult moments. Help us to make no excuses. Father, we gladly will yield ourselves to you. I pray that each of us has that mindset of completely yielding personally ourselves unto you. Lord, I ask you to make this verse come true for us. May your strength enable us to do more than we think that we can. I pray this in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, your strength is available. May your strength enable us to do much, much more than we really think we can. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. amen. And God bless you all.